Where is the Zaya Rakan? Like, Hello Slang is famous for his Rakan. Just give them some agency. Give this bot lane something to play through because the way in which G2 is playing right now is dominating. They are drafting well, they are controlling, and here we see the first big adaptation. Azir will be taken away from Perks. And now G2! <laughs> wow, they're gonna lock in the Aphelios. Clearly, they were ready for this one, Medic. Yeah, and the Corky as well, one of the well known mid lane picks into Azir. Uh, not the most interesting matchup in the 1v1, but we'll see how both those mid laners can influence the map. It looks like Reckless might be going across towards Whoa. his misfortune, and I know you're a big fan of this pick. Yeah, I'm a, actually a super big fan of this pick because I think Reckless is one of the best players at utilizing some of the tools that Misfortune has. And we're going to see how he moves around the map with this champion. And we're also going to get to see the Gragas from Fnatic. So now you can already see a lot more agency, a lot more scaling, a lot more teamfight options coming out from Fnatic. And given that G2 have banned away the Thresh themselves, they're going to have to think about what direction they want to go for their bot lane too. They could either lock in a support now or they could grab themselves a jungler, but it looks like they're gonna do neither and they're heading in the direction of going for another tank top medic. Could this mean that they're going for the enchanter support once more? Could this mean that they're thinking Lulu plus Aphelios once again? Oh, it's definitely possible. It gives Caps a little bit more safety. Of course, the Wild Growth helping him if he gets caught out of position. Uh, usually, you'd see the Aphelios teamed up with something like a Braum or a Thresh Typically, for yeah. that safety position, but with the Thresh being banned away and now set removed by G2. Does that uh, minimize that? Well, I mean, set can be top or support, of course. We'll see where Fnatic want to go with their bands. Maybe want to get rid of some of those enchanters because Mickey's look really good on them. And if you make them play a Felios Pike in the bottom lane or a Felios and uh, something that can't protect him <laughs> as much, it could work out well. So I like this adaptation from Fnatic banning away the Zillion. We talked about enchanters, and I think that that seems to be the trend that G2's going towards, and so Fnatic is respecting that. They're taking the Zillion off the board, and Rakan, we talked about it at the beginning of draft. I think that it would have made a lot of sense here for Fnatic because then you would have had both Selfmade and Hillisang on engaged champions. So G2 are going to look to take that one off the board, and now you can see this support pool is getting very narrow. What direction will both these go towards? As we see the final ban coming out from Fnatic being that Jarvan, that primary initiation tool that G2 have often relied on, that double tank setup where they've had the Orn plus the Jarvan is largely what enables an Enchanter to be played in the bot side of the map. So now we're going to have to see further adaptation as we enter the second phase of picks. So Trundle would make sense, gets you a, a strong jungler, you can get through tanks pretty easily with the Subjugate. Could of course be support Trundle, but I expect it to be in the jungle for Yankos. Uh, I, I'd actually really like to see a Nautilus come out from G2, I think it works well with the Aphelios and also helps you lock down that MF if she stands still and uses her ultimate. Fnatic looking towards their support, Pike of course, a Hillisang special, a G2 special, a, a good players in. Europe special, but instead <laughs> it looks like it might be something a little bit more defensive in the form of the Braum. So Braum is typically a good pick into things like the Orn, and now you can start to see that G2's engaged tools are slowly being whittled down. They don't have the Jarvan anymore, and with the Braum to mitigate the Orn ultimate, it's now a lot harder for G2 to just force a fight whenever they want. Their scaling is still good because they have the Corky and the Aphelios, but the overall team fighting from Fnatic is much stronger compared to what we've seen before. With the Zac engage, with the Gragas follow up, with the fact that they have so much crowd control, with the Braum and damage from the Azir and Misfortune, I feel like Fnatic already have so much more agency than what they've had so far in this series, and I think that this is a step in the right Ooh. direction, as we see another enchanter in the bot lane, Medic! Mickey, Mickey what happened to you? <laughs> I used to love watching you play. He was, he was what, he was a Thresh, Rakan, Pike main, now he's a Yumi, Lulu, Janna main. He's full-on enchanters, he has embraced the dark side, the poke lanes, the the protector AD carries. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're going to see a similar style where the front line is primarily going to be Yankos and Wonder with a lot of peel and protection. Like, Caps is going to be a big hyper carry with the support from Janna. And remember all those engage tools that I was talking about for Fnatic? Suddenly those get a lot harder yeah. when you're playing against the Janna. I'm sure anyone has experienced trying to start a fight and then Janna just like, whoosh, and you just get blown away. You get blown away, nothing you can do, and it's so frustrating to deal with. So with the poke coming out from 
both the Corky and depending on what gun Aphelios has, the Aphelios as well. I think like both these fights are going to be pretty interesting because it's going to be very dependent on who uses what and when. Bwipo's engage is going to get mitigated by the Janna. Wonder's engage is going to get mitigated by the Braum, which means that both teams are going to be throwing out poke back and forth, forcing each other to use those crucial abilities. And the moment they do, that's the key for each team to strike. But you have to remember the Janna is not only a good pick in this comp, it's also a great callback. Last time G2 beat Fnatic, it was Wonder on the Janna. We'll see if Mickey can get the win for G2 today as he picks up that pick. On to the rift we go for what could be the final game of the day. Vedi, I had a little look at the numbers across the course of the break. If G2 win this in 23 minutes, 31 seconds or less, it will be the fastest best of five we have ever had in the LEC, topping Spring Split last year, where G2 demolished Origin in a quick 3-0. And how disappointing would that be for Fnatic, right? The team that this split has been second pretty much for the majority of it. Yeah, sure, there was a period in time where I think they were dancing around third. They were tied for a large portion of it. But I think everyone has had G2 and Fnatic as the clear top twos. And then coming into playoffs, they played extremely well. Everyone was praising them as being the favorites to win the LEC. And now they're at the risk of having the fastest ever LEC yep. final loss happen. Or like the fastest LEC final period happen, rather. And so I'm sure Fnatic definitely don't want that to happen. Um, they have shaped up their draft a lot, but then G2, again with their adaptation, have brought out the Janna. And I'm excited to see how this will develop. And a lot in this series, we've been talking about like early pathing, what will we see from these junglers? And we can see that for now, Yankos is going to start on red, and he's going to do pretty much what he's done every game. Go from red, immediately into bot side. Selfmade is going to take a bit of a different approach. He's gone for the solo start as well, and he's going to go from walls and actually do a full top side first. So this gives him a couple options. He could either look for a top side gank, he could look for a bit of an opportunity in mid, he could go for a potential invade, or he could just hang around and then start pathing towards the bot side of this map. So Selfmade has given him quite a few options so far uh, with his current path. Yeah, and there's a reason we have seen this Gragas band out so often throughout the course of this series. It's because Selfmade's pretty darn good on the champion. 9-1 and one across the course of the LEC Spring Split. And we'll see what he decides to do early on. Right now, Wonder and Whipper on the opposite side of the matchup. Actually, Caps almost stunned up here, but he's going to try and turn this back around. The exhaust has been used, heal used as well by Reckless, and Yankos is in the right place at the right time. Wonder showing Whipper a little bit of the hammer as he brings the pain down in the top lane. Shouldn't be able to kill Whippo entirely, but he does with the Brittle. Manages to get him dead. Reckless has to flash away in the bottom lane, and it's all gone pear shaped for Fnatic. What is going on right now, Medic? Th this isn't the fanatic that we were promised. This is this is some this is some weird fanatic. What has happened? Whippo dying one v one. Sure, like okay, people would joke about this in the past, but this dude has been incredibly consistent. And in this matchup, one where he brought the Zac out during the regular season, for him to die one v one to wonder, very uncharacteristic from him. And then Reckless and Hillisang going full for an Just all-in engage again. against Caps and Mickey. No, it can't, no, it can't happen again. Whippo, oh, yeah. he, he has flash. No, no, no. I okay, mean, I, okay. he had flash the first time, Medius, and he yeah. used it. Yeah. So. But, no, but the, I mean, um, this is Zach, again, right? You play on the edge, so. Reckless so, you, and Hillisang as well, trying to force that all in on the bot side of the map. Like, Yankos has consistently pathed bot in the early game. Like, admittedly, they didn't have a huge amount of information as to where he started because he did do a solo start, but even then, like, we're seeing some very surprising performances from this Fnatic squad, and G2 are just quick to take advantage oh, of it. Whippo has to flash away. He's trying to get onto his Bloblers as quickly as possible, again. but he, yeah, he might just be dead. Wonder, all you have to do is land one more Bellows Breath, and Whippo cannot survive. Wonder just kills. Whippo squashes him <laughs> like a bit Wonder's of Play-Doh. Yeah, Wonder is just smurfing on Whipper right now. He also doesn't have teleport. So Wonder, who was already at an advantage after getting that initial solo kill, now can just push that wave in. Whipper's gonna lose a huge amount of farm. Like, things are already crumbling for Fnatic very early on into the game. And I think like we ask, what is this Fnatic? This is not the Fnatic we've seen through the rest of playoffs, but also G2. 
they've stepped up coming into this series. Like, this is not the G2 we saw lose to Mad Lions last week. It's a little bit like the G2 we saw beat Origin and beat Mad Lions, but this is another level. G2 are playing I mean, out of their minds. You're definitely right. G2 is playing extremely well, but that was largely in the first two games. In this game, it feels like yeah, Fnatic, Fnatic is just handing it, <laughs> handing it on a silver platter, and G2 is just like, okay, I guess we'll take that. Now, they do have a big wave stacked up in the bot side of the map, but no Trundle. He is going to start pathing that way, which means that G2 could look for an early Drake if they wanted to. Selfmade is currently sitting at the top side, but G2 don't have full information on where the enemy jungler is. And the other thing G2 have to be cautious of is the fact that Nemesis right now has control over the mid lane wave. So with these two wards, well, one ward on the bot side with top side scuttle control, it may be a little bit dangerous for Yankos to start off this Drake, but again, it is an option for G2. Herc's lower mana will just clear out the wave in the mid lane, as you say. Nemesis has had priority in that lane early on, as expected. Hillisang tried to trade here on towards Caps. Mickey doesn't have the flash. Rude is going to come out there, but Hillisang looking for the concussive blows. One more auto would be enough, but he's overstepped, overstayed as Caps opens up with the Inferno. One more auto will get him the kill, and now Reckless is on the receiving end of a lot of hurt here. Caps trying to do what he can, but he is overstepped, overstayed. Nemesis teleporting him behind as Reckless falls. Mickey's going to go down as well, and now Yankos underneath the turret is tanking this up, and this could be what Fnatic needs to get a hold back in this game. They pick up three kills in the bottom lane, a double goes to Nemesis, and Fnatic have started fighting back. And Fnatic finally get on the board, but it looked a little shaky at the start of that play. Hillisang flashing in to try and lock down Mickey. The execution of that was just way off, and G2 were able to quickly turn that one around. If it weren't for some quick thinking and the fact that they had prior win mid lane, this could have ended in disaster for Fnatic once again. So you can see Caps playing this extremely well, recognizing that Hillisang is overcommitted, swapping between the two weapons to be able to get the damage out. But then the TP flank comes in and Yankos recognizes, okay, maybe I don't want to commit to this play, and then he realizes, okay, fine, I'll go for the kill onto Reckless. I'll put him behind and trade three for two in this exchange, allowing Nemesis to pick up these kills, which is going to be extremely valuable for Fnatic as the game progresses. The fact that this is it is now 800 gold ahead of perks means that Fnatic have now been able to equalize a little bit and offset the huge disadvantage that they found themselves in the top lane with. And I think now all eyes have to go on Nemesis. And you have to say, well, you've got an 800 gold lead in the mid lane. How much can you do with that? How far can you take this advantage? Can you push Perks back in lane? Because Perks has been having a stellar series so far. He's going for a Corky build. We've seen a little bit on the edges of Corky builds. Uh, the Mane Mune Corky gets you a lot of yep. damage. Uh, but it's only really risen in favor, in favor recently. And he's on the it's, bad um, end of some of these trades. It's as a result of the presence of mind changes where you can now get all that extra mana from uh, from getting kills and getting assists. Yep. So it synergizes very nicely and you do get a lot of damage and AD off the back of it as well. And so he's going for much more of a scaling build, that's for sure. And the fact that Nemesis is already so close to his Nash's Tooth is going to be very valuable for him. self may now looking for a gank bot. Caps has no flash, doesn't really have a way to get away from this. Mickey has a flash, but he's not even going to get the chance to use it. Good kill there from Fnatic in the bottom lane. They even out that scoreboard there. Almost even in gold as well. Mickey, the uh, the ultimate support, dying yep. for his AD carry. That is what all AD carries wish their support to do for them. But we know that very few actually do. Now, of course, Fnatic are going to capitalize off the back of this by securing themselves the first Drake of the game. G2 going to trade on the other side of the map. Surely Whipper will not die again. He's using the Let's Bounce, picking up those Bloblets as much as he can. Wonder lands the Call of the Forge God, looking for that knock up as well. Can get the last auto in, but that's just the passive burn. I wonder if Wonder's going to be able to use the Bellows Breath to take out this kill. Doesn't quite have the range, and so has to retreat. Yeah, the uh, the tower is a little too dangerous there for Wonder, so he will pop the passive from Whippo, and G2 will be able to secure this Rift Herald. But Fnatic feeling a lot more comfortable than they were before. Selfmade also been involved in a lot of the early game action. And, uh, you can see that the gold is evened out a lot more. So. I want to draw your attention very quickly to the minimap. Look at Reckless. Look at what he's doing. He has reset, he has the Berserker's Grease, and he has the Triple Doran's Blade. Often what he'll do is rotate up towards the mid lane on this Misfortune, and because of how fast her movement speed is, you can actually look for a lot of opportunities. He realized that Nemesis was just pushing in that wave, so he's decided, okay, there's not much value in me heading over there right now, so he's just going to path towards bot. And you're going to see this a lot from Reckless throughout the game, because the great thing about Misfortune is she basically has inbuilt mobility boots 
Pirates, yep. which means that she can move to bot lane, catch a wave, and still rotate up to join the rest of her team because of how quickly she can move around the map. And it's something that Reckless takes a lot of advantage of, and we're going to keep track of as the game progresses. But we're about 10 minutes in. We've been talking a lot about how even the gold state is, um, but now we're kind of looking at what are these next steps. And a lot of the focus is now going towards early plates. The Rift Tower is available for G2, and given that Yankos is pathing towards bot, it looks like they want to try and get a little bit more gold into the pockets of Caps. At the moment, he's going to back away. I wonder if that was just G2 playing around the fact that Caps didn't have Flash and expecting Fnatic to make a play down there, so they just wanted to be in the area in case something happened. Caps will back away, gets himself a BF sword. So pretty even on gold with Reckless right now. Whipper and Wonder continue to trade in the top lane, but Whipper seems to be getting to a, an okay position in these trades. He hasn't yep. died against since those uh, two early kills. I mean, the fact that he died died early is yeah, still well. very surprising. Uh, of course, the great thing about Zack is he doesn't need kills to be relevant. He's a low econ top laner, and so he's always going to offer value regardless of how far behind he is, just because of the sheer amount of utility that he oh, provides. Whip. Another big trade here for Wonder. Whipper does still have ult, whereas Wonder doesn't quite have his off cooldown. Just comes off as I was saying that, so... I wonder if Propo maybe is trying to bait Wonder into something here. Nemesis is on his way up. Wonder's going to flash away. And that is a summoner spell burnt from the G2 top laner. Yeah, you can, you can see the healing now really coming through from the passive of Buipo. And now that he's reached a point where his trades are going much more in his favor, definitely a much more comfortable position for him. Meanwhile, on the bot side of the map, G2 are looking to utilize the Rift Herald to try and secure an early tab. And a TP comes through from yep. Fnatic. Fnatic don't want this to happen. This is Bwipo coming in behind. Teleport used by G2 as well. Yankos rooted up. He gets the subjugate off just in time. And Bwipo, of course, does not have his passive. Here's the call of the Forge God. Hillasang eats it up with the Unbreakable Wall. And here come the rest of Fnatic. We're going for the fight. Selfmade coming in from the side. There's no perks here yet. And Wonder's going to get locked up. A great cast as Nemesis slides in and shuffles Fnatic back. And G2 have lost two already. Perks trying to come in from the side. He can get a lot of damage down with these missiles. If he can connect. If he can connect. But he can't quite find his mark. Fnatic get two kills in the bottom lane. Yeah, really good play here from Fnatic. They're still a little bit behind in gold because of the tower plates the G2 picked themselves up for, but the TP play from Bwipo is much more reminiscent of the Fnatic that we've seen so far in playoffs. They wanted to punish G2 for making this investment towards the bot side of the map. They weren't going to do the traditional trade. They were like, nope, we're going to fight here. Only two members of G2 sitting bot as Mickey was getting some vision. You can see this alcove ward allows Fnatic to find this flank. Meanwhile, look at the minimap. You can see Azia and Gragas already rotating down, and Corky had used his teleport to get back to the mid lane, which means that he's always going to arrive late. This now gives Fnatic a numbers advantage, and it forces G2 on the retreat. Good barrel, and here the ultimate from Mickey actually knocks Nemesis behind to allow for a very unfortunate uh, Sharima shuffle, which then puts G2 into this situation where they're like, oh no, we're being attacked now from two sides, and uh, Fnatic end up finding a bunch of kills. So Fnatic now in a very comfortable position, even though they're 1k goal down. You can see that 1,000 gold lead is only in the top lane. Wonder, 1,000 gold ahead of Whippo, but Nemesis has a lead himself in the mid lane. G2 trying to capitalize on that top lane. Disadvantage for Whippo. Whippo still doesn't have his passive, doesn't have his ult, doesn't have his flash, and really doesn't have a hope in hell of surviving this one unless he does something miraculous. Whippo locked up underneath the turret, and he will fall. G2 get the kill. Wonder, his third on the board. So as you rightly said, the kills keep going down onto Wonder, which is probably the best case scenario for Fnatic because, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Bwipo is always going to offer utility and value, even if he's like 0-5. Meanwhile, more plates are being invested into Reckless, more plates are being invested into Caps, and a lot of this game is going to be between the mid laners and the AD carries, who are going to be the primary damage dealers as we get later into this game. But you can see how much stronger Nemesis is at this point in the game. 3-0-1, already has the completed Nash's Tooth, already working towards what looks to be like a death cap as well, means that Nemesis is definitely going to be one of the primary carries of the game. And a mid laner being a primary carry is not anything new for European League of Legends. In the past, it's been perks and caps. Since spring 2016, these two players have claimed every single championship. And now we'll see if Fnatic and Nemesis can stop that spree from happening. Because as you say, Vedius, a lot of this game, a lot of the way Fnatic will fight these teamfights is on Nemesis' shoulders. Now, 
Of course, because G2 committed caps towards the top side of the map to secure that tower, Fnatic had control of the bot side and over the mid lane, which means that they have easy access to the river and will be able to secure the second mountain. So Fnatic now have this mountain soul, sorry, mountain soul, the infernal soul rather, as a primary win condition, and they're already much stronger at this point in the game. The thing you have to keep bearing in mind is the scaling aspect of caps. The thing I think Caps is going to struggle with in these fights is dealing with the Zac, and that's why Mickey is going to be so important as we enter the mid game and these fights are going to be ever prone. Remember what we were talking about at the beginning of the game? I want to reinstate that. Braum Shield versus Janna Tornado and Ultimate. These are the two tools that will mitigate the engages from both sides, and um, if something gets used too early or if something doesn't get properly thrown up, then that engage is going to come down onto the carries of both Fnatic and G2, and then they're going to be in some serious trouble. Keep your eyes on the supports, the AD carries, and the mid laners. In fact, keep your eyes on everyone because every single Just keep player watching in the game. this <laughs> every single player in this game has shown in the past in these playoffs that they can stand up and that they can make the big plays for their teams. G2 now looking perhaps to contest this Rift Herald perks coming in. He's got the package. He's got an easy escape tool as they jump in, and he'll use it to get the hell out of dodge. Meanwhile, G2 are pushing in the mid lane and the bottom lane as Wonder is down there by himself. So, Fnatic trading mid lane priority for, uh, oh sorry, mid lane pressure for this Rift Herald. They can use this to break into the mid tier one as well. And I kind of want to say, even though Fnatic is behind in gold, they're actually in a very comfortable spot right now because, excuse me, one of the things that G2 will have to struggle with is trying to get through the Azir wave player that is just very good at holding the line. He's very good at delaying out the game and especially keeping his mid lane turret alive. The fact that Fnatic have used this Herald top means that the map is going to be a lot more exposed and Fnatic are going to have tools to stall out this game for longer and set themselves up more for success as the game progresses. So I think there's more of an issue for G2, especially if they can't break this mid tier. Hella Sang had to use his exhaust. Reckless having to flash away here because G2 just continually put the pressure on. They find these little advantages. You can see there both Hillisang and Reckless thought they were safe, but a tornado locked up Reckless. Now he's burnt his flash, going to use the bullet time for the call of the Forge God is coming out to try and stop it. Hillisang knocked up with the ram. Nemesis fighting off towards Perks in the side lane. Perks are landing a lot of those missiles, but Nemesis and his soldiers are doing absolute work. Perks has to flash away. And at the moment, Nemesis is in the advantage in that 1v1. Yeah, so Nemesis is basically winning 1v1 in the side lane. Not something you typically see from an Azir, but in this comp, he's more than happy to do that. He's going to try and TP out of this situation as G2 look for a collapse. He recognizes that he didn't back quickly enough, but he will be able to get out of harm's way. Fnatic also hold on to... Oh, as I was saying that, the mid-tier 1 does fall. And I like that G2 did commit so heavily into trying to secure that mid-tier 1 because I think it was really important. Um, because as long as Fnatic held that, it was going to be much easier for them to move into both sides of the river and then start attacking these side lanes and getting that deeper vision control. But now all these outer towers are starting to fall. Now the map is opening up a lot more. And we're going to start seeing these 4-1 setups largely from both sides. Of course, the big advantage that Fnatic has is that with the Azir being as strong as he is, he's going to have a lot more control. Yeah, he's got his death cap complete alongside the Nash's too. No Triforce yet for Perks. Still only sitting on those level one boots. So doesn't have that magic penetration, doesn't have the Sheen. Well, he does have the Sheen Fox, but not the full Triforce damage that comes out. And uh, as, as we've said, even though G2 are slightly ahead in gold, that gold is inconsequential right now. It's basically even between the two teams. Mid lane, there is a 2,000 gold lead for Nemesis. With the Drake spawning in about a minute's time, that's likely where we're going to have to see both teams start setting up for. You can see that Orn is now pushing out the bot side of the map. Perks has just pushed out the top. He does have TP advantage over Nemesis, which means that he may look to try and keep him there so that he can then TP down and give numbers over to G2. But for now, Fnatic using their numbers as a three-man to push in mid, gain this mid prior. But the fact that they haven't been able to take the mid tier one makes contesting for the river that bit harder. So they're going to concede it for now wait for Nemesis to push out the top lane, and then have him actually group down. As I say that, we actually got Whippo roaming. I think the goal of Whippo here is just to shadow Nemesis to make sure that he's safe in his rotation back down to group up with the rest of his team. Have a look at how many wards G2 have around this mid lane, though. It's, they're starting to get cleared out, but it was just a slew of them. Two in mid, one in the mid top bush, one in the mid bottom bush. A control ward where Mickey is, another ward just around the corner, control wards in the river, G2 trying to get total vision control 
The Fnatic just forced in the mid lane, looking for this turret. They're going to take that tower pretty quickly as Bipple jumps forward and the damage comes out. And Caps is deleted off the face of Summoner's Rift. Nemesis goes on a rampage and now Fnatic have easy access to the river. So you can see what happens when Janna isn't there to protect the Aphelios. The low mobility AD carry very easily gets dived on by the Zac and instantly melted. And that's ideally what Mickey wants to be doing, as you just saw on your screen, against the Zac. But he was sitting in Fog of War, he caught Caps unawares, and Fnatic were able to find themselves a quick kill. They get the Tier 1, they get themselves the Infernal Drake, and now they're at Soul Point. Fnatic definitely bouncing back uh, here in Game 3. This is so much more the Fnatic we expected to see coming into these finals. The first two games look like an aberration now as Fnatic, uh, as you say, are fighting back, bouncing back here against G2. Soul Dragon up in 4 minutes 44 seconds time. And we have actually officially passed the quickest ever best of five timer here, Vedius. Uh, G2 aren't going to be able to get it. And if we get to 23 minutes, we won't get the quickest ever best of five in European history either. I think, I think, Fnatic will hold on to the honor of not having that record. Uh, in it looks series. like it. I mean, Fnatic right now is in a great position to be able to bounce back in this third game, potentially bring us to a game four, but there's still a lot left to be played. Atomization is still coming through from the side of G2. You can see that the uh, Mora Mana is not yet completed for perks. So once that comes through, he's going to be feeling a lot stronger. Uh, he is a level behind Nemesis as well. Cap's in a similar position where even though he does have two completed items, being one level down and being at the mercy of whether or not Bwipo can dive on top of him is going to dictate the outcome of a lot of these fights. But I do feel that in terms of front to back, it's a lot easier for Fnatic to be able to execute. Well, we'll see in about three minutes time, probably. There's no 20 minute Baron here from Fnatic. Killersang has been locked up. He's going to try and put the damage back onto Wonder, but he's already used the Unbreakable, so he has to burn his flash. Now Hillersang time to re-engage with self-made. There's a concussive blows. Nemesis off towards the side is distracting four members of G2 as Wonder's being jumped on by Whipper. The Moonlight Vigil doesn't quite land. Nemesis putting the damage down onto Caps. He's still alive just for the moment, but now he'll die. Caps gets it. G2 able to get out five players strong. Fnatic on the defensive now as Caps opens up with the Shurikens, but won't get the damage down he was looking for. G2 could just go straight towards this Baron. They just used the Monsoon. They've healed up. G2 could be the ones making the Baron play. Fnatic are cautious of it. You can see that it has been started off. The Janna Aphelios combo is slowly melting through this and Selfmade is in the vicinity, but Wonder TP's back in. Wonder's looking for the home guards, trying to chase down. Reckless doesn't have the call of the Forge God, no slow yet, and that strut is going to speed up Reckless. Hillisang, though, caught out, trying to jump back with the stand beside me, and there's the Make It Rain to get the slow on G2. Hillisang might be sacrificed here. Reckless will be able to get away, just walks away by himself. But Hillisang, oh, does he have another W? Can he jump across the wall? Once again, Reckless is going to have to use the Blast Cone to make sure he escapes to safety. No Baron, but a kill for G2. I mean, I think that's the best case scenario for Fnatic. They don't give the Baron over to G2. They only overall lose two members, and they're actually able to get back out onto the map, so they don't really lose that much in terms of control or objectives. Here we see where the fight really kicks off. Hillisang jumps forward, and G2 see an opportunity to re-engage. A lot of ultimates end up getting used, but the 3v3, G2 feel pretty confident. Meanwhile, in the jungle, you can see that Nemesis is having to deal with Yankos and Caps and Perks, who are all looking to chase him down. He thinks he's Safe, but a huge package from Perks cuts off the escape route from Nemesis and he ends up getting blown up as the rest of G2 are disengaging and Fnatic can't find any additional kills. We then of course see that back and forth around the Baron where G2 do get an additional kill off the back of that but overall this just means that G2 closed the kill gap a little bit but it doesn't result in a huge amount of map pressure swing in their favor doesn't really change the game state as such, yeah. just changes that scoreboard a little bit. A thousand gold lead for G2, self-made perhaps caught out, got knocked up on the wall there, has to flash away and that's a big summoner spell burn. Call of the Forge God was blocked by Hillisang. And uh, as you said earlier, Vedius, you have to watch for that Unbreakable. That's so impactful for Hillislang if he uses it to get rid of that key engage ultimate. Now, Wonder was standing on a control ward here. Perks is coming across it as well. G2 now realized there was a control ward in that bush all along, and so they couldn't really set up the trap they wanted. Fnatic, though, I mean, a 1 3 1 here, Vedius. Bipo was pushing in the bottom lane, and Nemesis is by himself in the top. Well, with this comp, Nemesis knows that he can win out in a 1v1 against the Corky, and Bipo's probably feeling pretty confident that. 
he can also 1v1 the Orn. I don't think that they should be able to kill each other, but he should at the very least be able to hold him. Meanwhile, with the wave being pushed in bot, Fnatic have the reset from Whippo and they're using this to gain some control over the river, but the TP comes in from Perks and G2 are contesting this. They've now grouped up as five. They're sacrificing the sideway farm and Fnatic want to look for an engage, but Whippo's going to cancel it for now. 30 seconds on that dragon. G2 cannot give it up. An Infernal Drake on Fnatic would be the death nail for them. The final nail perhaps in this coffin. G2 have control over the area. No Fnatic vision here yet. I believe Mickey was faking it back. He could have gone back though. He's going to go back now. He's looking for the extra wards. Got to control and buffed up his bulwark. But not the engage available for Fnatic. We're both standing across the wall here now with the dragon coming up in 10 seconds. Fnatic will look for a fight. They don't have to fight around this, of course. They'd love to take it. But they can just try and pull G2 across towards the Baron instead. Yeah, and this is where Fnatic is uh, forcing G2's hand. Hey, are you going to give up the Drake or are you going to give up the Baron? G2 are trying to contest both. Caps is soloing the Drake as Fnatic are starting this objective off and G2 are just trying to buy time. Look at the flank from Whippo. Whippo in a great position, but he's not going to use the Elastic Slingshot. The Baron down to 4,000 HP as Fnatic try and do it. Wonder jumping in, the damage coming out as Hillisan gets low. But look at the damage already on Yankos. He's down, that's the jungler. He knows Smite available. Caps still on his way to join the team. Monsoon used by Mickey, the Baron. Ever lower as the Call of the Forge God comes out. Hillisang almost chunked out. He's going to fall. And now Fnatic are retreating back towards the top lane. But Whippo is the next target for G2. They'll put him into his passive. The Blobbrus form and Fnatic cannot defend them. Two kills to G2. And they will chase a Fnatic away. Will they continue on this? Because they could just turn towards the Baron. Teleport used by Nemesis to get away. And G2 to decide not to do the Baron and just settle for the kills. So G2 actually get their cake and eat it too. They're able to deny the Infernal Soul and buy a little bit more time for themselves. And they actually stop the Baron from going down. And the key thing about this is Fnatic is looking for a fight, either with a numbers advantage or to secure the Baron. The ultimate gets used very early from Azir, but look at how quickly it gets broken by Wonder. At this point, you're thinking, okay, the Trundle is dead, which means that Fnatic can now win the team fight. But Caps joins the fray, and there's no threat on him. Look at his positioning this time around. He doesn't have to fear anyone trying to dive onto the backline, which means that he can just play from behind his tank, and he can just slowly dish out the damage while Fnatic is forced to retreat. And now G2 gain control of the river. It's only a thousand gold between the two teams, but we're starting to see these big items on G2. Trinity Force upgraded into Trinity Fusion for perks. The Mura Mana fully stacked up. Infinity Edge, Essence Reaver, Runan's Hurricane on caps. These are very powerful carries for G2. And although Nemesis is at three and a half items, although Reckless is at two items, we've seen some fights start to turn in G2's favor. It's all about how the disengage happens, whether the Call of the Forge God is blocked, whether the Elastic Slingshot is knocked back with the Howling Gale, and whether Nemesis can dish out the DPS that he really needs to for Fnatic. Yeah, a lot of weight is going to be on the shoulders of Nemesis. He is incredibly strong with these three items. And we see a lot of ults being thrown around, Medic. Oh, bullet time comes out. Mickey's just about able to survive. And there, here comes the re-engage as Whippo jumps in. Wonder doing a lot of damage with the Call of the Forge God coming out. Selfmate's going to fall. And now Whippo is caught out all by himself. Five members strong. G2's continue to push in. Whippo almost goes down. The Moonlight Vigil not going to have enough damage as Reckless opens up on Wonder. They trade it one for one so far in the fight as Nemesis is able to put the soldiers up and force G2 Success. away. Instead, he goes forward. Has to flash away. Caps trying to get forward, trying to get the damage down as Nemesis will fall underneath the turret. And now it's two for one in favor of G2. And their eyes turn straight back towards the Baron. Yeah, with Nemesis dead, this is a great opportunity for G2 to actually start this one off. They have the protection from Mickey as well, but with three members of Fnatic alive, of course they're going to look to contest this. Zack is up, that engage tool is primed and ready to go. The damage from Reckless is there as well. Let's see who is able to come out on top. One good double up could kill a player from G2. Yankos is so low. Reckless gonna put the Make It Rain down. Caps is tanking up the, the Baron right now. Bribo stopped in his tracks as the Howling Gale meets the Elastic shing Slingshot and now he's dead. Reckless and Hillisang, it's all on you. You have to do something here because the Baron's already fallen. Yankos gonna open up on Hillisang. He puts down the Unbreakable. Selfmate's gonna join the fray as well as Yankos goes low. But Hillisang's dead. The flash away. Wonder TP'd in behind him and he meets Reckless and shut him down. And now with the Baron G2 could have turned this game. Fnatic looked to be the favorites but G2 up fighting strong. G2 are now in full control of this third and potentially final game. The the pressure is overwhelming Fnatic and Nemesis in that crucial moment ended up dropping. With five members of G2 alive, I think with the wave clear of Nemesis, it might not be enough, but 
They're knocking on the doors of the base. The teleports are coming through. Only two members of Fnatic are currently alive. This could very well, well be Whippo, the game. Whippo's back up now. Self-made's up as well as Nemesis. The Hillisang is just about to respawn, but G2 are looking to end this one as quickly as they can. Self-made jumps in. They shot down the Corky, and they're looking for the caps as well. Whippo jumps onto the back line, but Nemesis is already dead. And caps is going to open up on Whippo. Self-made, Hillisang, you've got to get in there. You've got to fight with your teammate, because... Reckless is on his way. It's a double for Caps. 8, 3, and 4 on the day in the game against his former team. And the bullet time coming out. G2 will back away. They won't take the Nexus, but they have taken so much from Fnatic. Wow, that was very intense. Perks just kind of dives into the Nexus turrets there. And while he did lose his life, G2 did not lose the fight. Mickey now being caught out. Very low HP. G2, they're going back in. G2 looking for the re-engage as Hillisang has stepped a little bit too far forward. Caps can't find the moonshot, but Hillisang is getting chunked out. He's almost dead. He's done. Caps goes legendary. And Rectus now tries to open up, but he just doesn't have the damage. He's only at two items. Caps has so much DPS in comparison. Nine, three, and four on the Aphelios that Fnatic could not make work in the first two games. And these fights were always going to be about how well do the carries survive? Can these tanks get onto the back line? And, and a lot of the fights that we've been seeing from Fnatic, Caps has not been threatened. In that initial Baron fight, and the last fight that we just saw between the two teams, Caps was left untouched, which means that he was just dishing out all this damage. He had his core itemization completed. And with the support of a Janna as well, it was just too difficult for Fnatic to come out on top. And you thought, oh, maybe, maybe Nemesis can stall, maybe he can hold out. But then he dives in at that tower defense. If he had stayed alive, it would have been a lot harder for G2 to do that Baron. But with his death, it opened the door for G2. They secure the Baron, and now they are in full control. They're looking to 3-0 Fnatic. They're looking to match Fnatic in terms of European titles. And G2 are looking to take the win. Ocelot said it, same amount of titles in half the time was the aim. Fnatic have been in 15 splits, G2 only in 9. Seven titles in 9 splits is what G2 would get if they take this game, if they take this series, and now they're looking to take this bot lane push. They've got the minions pushing in, super minions coming in the mid lane as G uh, Fnatic try and scramble a defense, try and find some way of stopping the unstoppable tide that G2 seem to be. They're waiting for the waves, they're trying to match up, they're trying to sync it up. Super Minions coming in the mid lane. And the recalls come out from G2. It looked like they were going to do something, instead they reset, they look for these next items, and they can come back onto the map. Yeah, for now G2 are just going to play it safe. They know that they're in a very commanding position, Caps is incredibly strong, but you've got to respect Nemesis, and you've got to respect the fact that Fnatic's ability to engage from a very far away distance is very potent. Whippo can use that engage to dive onto the back line, and if he can land a crucial E, then that could be all Fnatic need to be able to win out on a team fight. You remember the amount of disruption that they have with Gragas Barrel, with the Zac Ultimate, with the Azir Wall. There are so many things that G2 have to be careful of, so they don't overcommit. They're just going to reclaim some control over the map. They've pushed out Bot. Obviously, Bot is still pushing in favor of Fnatic right now, so. G2 are going to leave that and now start to play through topside, look to slowly chip away at these outer towers and start getting closer and closer to the base of Fnatic. You can see the damage the Perks does with those auto attacks caps as well, just going to shred through that tower in a second. Wonder pushing in the mid lane with the super minions coming in, a minute 30 left on that inhibitor before it respawns. Bot wave pushing slowly towards the base as G2 go quickly in the top lane, that inhibitor tower is already dead, they're looking for the inhib next, Wonder doing what he can in the mid lane to try and force Fnatic back with that inhibitor's gone and the elastic slingshot comes in, stopped in his tracks, Whippo already almost in his passive, has to use the stopwatch and perks off towards the side, he's just zoning the rest of Fnatic, Hillisang flashes forward and misses the Winter's Bite and now Whippo's in his passive, gone down into his second life, can he come back alive, the Monsoon used by the Janna just to try and heal up his teammates, Hillisang's done, Whippo's done and perhaps Fnatic are done as Nemesis is caught underneath the Nexus Towers, a double kill for perks, Reckless tries to do what he can with the bullet time but he just can't do enough, G2 takes Four caps goes legendary, and G2 are looking to die reckless on the fountain. G2 are inevitable, G2 are inescapable. Europe, G2 are your spring split champions as they take down the Nexus and claim in the end their seventh title, matching the record set by Fnatic. Seven titles for G2. It was a much closer game three
It was hard fought from Fnatic, but in the crucial moments, they were not able to compete, and G2 found those small windows of opportunity to come back. Huge props to Caps, lots of questions around the role swap, but he was pivotal in this third and final game, and the way in which Mickey was able to provide support for him and the front line that he had really just set him up for success. Nemesis was the player that we were looking at and he got so fed, but a couple of small mistakes ended up getting crucially punished and in the end, Fnatic could not compete. Fnatic end up losing 0-3. G2 will now match them in the number of titles and G2, they definitely styled on Fnatic in today's final. They really did. A G2 that we hadn't seen really through the rest of playoffs. Glimpses here and there, but today everything seemed to come together. Uh, congratulations as well to Caps, whom it gets his fifth LEC title, equaling Soaz and Yellow Star's uh, number. Uh, Perks, of course, sitting at seven now, the only player ever to get more than five. Incredible performance from him and from G2. Once again, they just look a cut above Fnatic today. Yeah, and it's pretty crazy because I think many people looked at this series and thought it was going to be, at the very least, four games. And based on how Fnatic's early game went, I was expecting this to be a Fnatic win and then we're going to another game and we're going to see more adaptation and evolution, but they weren't able to do it. A couple of small mistakes were punished so hard and that's just the level that we're playing at right now. G2 and Fnatic, they constantly push each other to the edge. They're constantly testing each other's limits and whenever someone slightly oversteps, whenever someone makes that small poor adjustment, that is when the enemy team strikes. And I think that Game 3 best represented that, but at the very end of it, it was G2 that ended up coming out on top. It really was, and as you say, credit to Fnatic in that final game. They put a lot of uh, of pressure on G2, but it was just those, those small mistakes, those little moments going for a little bit too much, trying to make too much out of a play where G2 were able to strike. And G2, I mean, that's what they've done. That's what they've done through the entirety of their stay in the LEC, and that's what they continue to do this year, even with the role swap that a lot of people have questioned across the course of the split that I've questioned as well. Caps, as you say, really stood out as an AD carry on the day. Yeah, and I think that Fnatic and Fnatic fans are obviously going to be very disappointed with the performance of this final. I think everyone was looking at it and we were having flashbacks to summer split with the double best of fives yep. that all went to the full five games. They were nail biters. They were incredibly close and Fnatic, they definitely underperformed. A lot of question marks around their drafts in the first two games. It felt like that they weren't given the style that they found so much success success with and we did finally get to see it in game three but of course that was too little too late and they end up getting three zeros and considering how close it was considering how confident they were um, it's got to be nothing but disappointment for Fnatic once again who still are yet to usurp their rivals. Europe, your seven-time champions. G2 Esports, you can see Perks there lifting the trophy. Yankos, our split MVP. A, a, just an indomitable performance by G2. They were exceptional from start to finish, Vedios. Yeah, they certainly were. You can see the elation and uh, <laughs> the fact that they're able to lift the trophy in a time like this is great to see. Yeah. And <laughs> you can see them all having a lot of fun with it. Definitely well deserved. G2 had a fantastic best of five final here. And now each, <laughs> each player getting their opportunity to do the trophy lift. Uh, and uh, grabs, of course, the draft meister, the draft king in those first two games. Uh, what a performance by him and from the entire team. They all had, uh, as you can see, Duffman there raising the trophy as well. I think my favorite Actually, thing about Duffman, this is like, Wonder in his shorts, Medic. Wonder in his shorts Look, is Betty, definitely my favorite. I'll be honest, if I had shorts I could wear with suspenders, I'd be wearing them. It's jolly warm. <laughs> <laughs> the little bit of confetti as well. <laughs> well, incredibly good stuff from G2 today, of course. Fnatic taking second place will be uh, dismayed with the result, but... You can come back next split, you, you know, bring it back. I think a lot of people will be very happy with the way Fnatic played generally across the course of the split, if not in the finals. Yeah, uh, but of course, like, that's the bit where it matters, Medic. Yeah, and so true. you can't... Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's definitely going to be a tough, uh, a bittersweet ending for um, 
Fnatic fans and Fnatic themselves, they're definitely going to be very disappointed. You could see, like, many of us looked at this and were like, this has to be an upgrade from what we saw last split. Yeah. But the thing is, even if you make improvements, everyone else makes improvements as well. And throughout playoffs, I think all we've seen is G2 make those small adjustments, make those small uh, adaptations. And at the end of the day, this was the team, these were the players that won MSI, won back-to-back -back splits last split and made it all the way to the World Finals. And the one thing you have to credit them for is when they find a mistake, they fix it fast and they always seem to evolve evolve another level after improving upon that. They really do. Uh, just in case anyone's wondering, there was a courier standing by between the Fnatic and G2 houses with the LEC trophy. So when we got to the win moment, they were able to take the trophy to whichever team won. Uh, they, G2 just didn't have the trophy from the start of the series or anything like that. <laughs> you yeah. guys, like, we, we could joke about the LEC being scripted, but it's not. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, great performance from G2 on the day. And as you say, they, they continue to bounce back. And I can only hope that we see more of them in Summer Split and in, uh, and in MSI. And of course, we are just setting up for an interview with the winning team yeah. now. So uh, once that is ready, we will be able to toss it over. But thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in. It has, of course, been a challenging past couple of weeks. But we on the LEC team are so happy and proud of what we've been able to put together. And we hope that the fans of home have been able to enjoy this show. Because, honestly, it's been a lot of fun to do. And the fact yeah. that we can crown champions of the LEC Spring Split has definitely been a highlight of ours. So thank you, everyone.